Five. Hey, what's going on? This is your boy Five Piece, producer and engineer extraordinaire. Are you an artist, producer, engineer, or music professional that's looking for funding for your music career? Could you benefit from having funding for studio time, mixing and mastering, or even marketing costs? I think I have something for you. I've written a free ebook, it's nine pages, super short and digestible, where I break down the six main places that artists and professionals like yourself can find funding for their musical projects. If this sounds like it's of value to you, please click the link below and you can download this for free today and benefit from this knowledge. I hope this helps. I'll see you guys soon. Peace. Five. What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is your boy, Five Piece Producer and Engineer Extraordinaire. Thanks for checking out this video. If you haven't already, please hit the bell and the subscribe button below to stay tuned for more tutorials in the future. In this video, I'm actually gonna show you a game-changing technique that I learned, and I'm actually gonna rewind to my producer mixing workshop that happened not too long ago, where I walk you through how to do multi-band sidechain compression. Now, this is a very key trick that I learned that literally changed everything for me, so definitely pay attention and find a way to incorporate this into your mixes. Let's jump to that workshop and I'll show you what's going on. So, that's one way to sidechain compress. I'm gonna get into this other way. I'm gonna just make this inactive. And I'm gonna throw on FabFilter Pro MB. All right, looks very much like nothing's happening right now. Pro MB is an interesting device. It's a multi-band compressor. What that basically is, is it divides your song or your sounds into multiple frequency spectrums, right? So you might have like, I could actually set like four different frequency spectrums. So let me just, just to exemplify it, I wouldn't actually use it like this, but just to show you. So right now I have four bands that I've created. I could create more if I want, but if I play it, and I could like isolate specific frequencies, almost like an EQ, well then I could compress just that band, right? So maybe I just want to compress the bass sound. Maybe I just want to compress the high end of that sound, right? This is the device that you can do that with. Let me set this back to a default. Now how I'm going to use this, because we're doing this for sidechain compression once again. I'm going to go here, you have the key up top. I haven't figured out how to do this in Ableton yet. I don't know if Ableton just doesn't want to make it work. But what I could do is I could isolate a specific band, perhaps up to 200 hertz, let's say, right? So all the lows of a bass. All right, time out for one second. I just want to break something down because I do kind of veer off track for a sec. But on this track, what I'm doing is I'm taking the key input and that key input is from the kick drum. So right now the kick drum is triggering the bass to duck. Every time the kick happens, the bass is going to reduce in volume only for the duration of the kick. I just want to explain that a little bit more. Let's get back to the workshop. All right. And what I'm going to do is, if I open up this little tab here and I hit EXT, it's going to basically look for the key. This is saying external sidechain, as you see here. And now every time the kick hits, it's only going to cause the low end of the bass to get ducked. Just for this example. We'll talk about dialing in the right frequency after. All right? See it? Exactly. It's the same exact key. Nothing has changed in terms of the key. The only thing that's changed is which compressor I'm using. So I went from using a compressor, and that compressor was obviously affecting the entire frequency range, to now I'm using the Pro MB, which is only focusing on the low end of the bass and compressing the low end of it. Because really, like, I'm saying, hey, bass, like, duck the whole thing when I'm using the regular compressor. Duck every frequency evenly. Fuck it, right? Well, maybe we don't need to do that. Maybe we only need to make the bass clear out a little bit for the kick only when it hits, and then that's it. Could you be more specific and only cut the frequency or cut the frequency of the kick in the um, Pro MB? That's exactly, that's, that's the next phase. That's the next phase, you're, you're getting there. So basically, yeah, I only just did this just to kind of show you the point, but if I was gonna really, really set this properly, I would look at my kick here, I'd probably solo it. I'd probably use the Fab Filter Pro Q once again. And same kind of thing that I said before with the basses. Let's play it and just pay attention to what point seems like it has the highest amplitude, right, volume-wise on the, on the grid. 
And then once we identify that point, we'll probably isolate that on the compressor and have that be the frequency that gets really ducked, right? Exactly, exactly. But sometimes the only issue with it sometimes is it's too specific and it sounds very like noticeable. That's the only time where like you got to kind of mitigate. But I'll show you. I have I have a couple of, of ways to you know to exemplify the point. So here, let's play this. Let's just figure out where the kick is uh, sitting frequency wise. Right here, whatever this is. Fifty three. I'll just isolate it. more bass. Also around four hundred. A little boxy, but I also know that's where that punch is sort of coming from. You know, and I'm doing this by isolating the frequency right now. I can just hear it right if I let go. I hear the whole thing, but if I isolate it like this, I'm hearing just that frequency that I'm focused on. But yeah, around here, 52 for sure is where I want to be at. So I'll go to my Pro MB, and we're kind of in that range anyways. I mean, we are pretty much in that range, but maybe I'll just have it stop at about 47. The very, very low end is going to be preserved, and we're only going to be compressing this range of the bass. I'll get rid of the multiband. It's just it's just helping it be more pronounced, right? It's a it is. That's why I usually, to be honest, because like, I don't know, for some reason when I leave the low end like that, it just sounds a little weird. So I'll do it more like this. I just have it be the whole low end. Yeah. Sounds way more musical. And if we really want to kick this up another notch, the beauty of these plugins, the thing I love about FabFilter is they have a dry wet knob on the mix. So that means I could blend, you know, basically a parallel compression, like I was saying, where we could do that here in a sense. So maybe I want it to be like 50%, you know what I mean? And now this will be still compressing and showing that, but it's not affecting it as drastically, right? So I would keep the, uh, the Pro MB on there. Obviously, I think that's the better choice between that and the other one. Just from a logic perspective, I don't, I don't necessarily want every frequency on the bass to be uh, ducking every time the kick hits. I only want those specific frequencies being the low end to get out of the way for the kick so that the kick really punches and comes out on top. We're hearing that, everything is blessed. So what I would do is I could actually copy that and I would actually start putting this on the groups. So I'd probably put this on the all music group effects group, guitar group. Obviously, I'm not going to put it on the drum group because that's where the sound lives. And if I did, otherwise, every time the kick hits, all the drums are going to duck out, including the kick. So it's kind of like counterproductive, you know? But with this set, with this as it is, everything should now be really making space for the kick and like the kick should be dominating fully now in the low end. So let's just play this. I'll kind of do an example where I get rid of them all and we listen. It's essentially just saying like, yo, this sound is priority. Make sure this guy gets in first. He's VIP. You know what I mean? That's essentially what side chaining is in my experience. And now we did this here with the kick. I've done this. I actually often do this with my snares or claps or whatever, um, you know, is accenting. Sorry, the... say that again. I'll do this with my, my snares and my claps as well. Like. 
Well, like I say snares or more snares or claps. Either one, like whatever you have in your track, like whatever that sound is that's emphasizing the two and the four, maybe it's a percussion. You want that to be dominating over every other sound. So I would do the same exact process. The only difference is I would send it out of the snare as opposed to sending it from the kick, right? And then same exact process set up. Depending on your taste for the song, you can clap one way or stand up. Absolutely, yeah. Assuming you have both, yeah, right? Exactly. Some people will have like clap and then accent on like, you know what I mean? Clap, cha, cha, clap, right? So like, you could do it for everything, right? But whatever the main snare sound, whether it's a snare, clap, or percussion, I would do that. I also do that for vocals. The only thing as well though, I should mention if you do that, do that for snares, claps, etc., is you're gonna wanna change the frequency. You're not gonna wanna focus on uh, compressing the low end or side chaining the low end because that doesn't make any sense if the clap lives somewhere else. You wanna find the fundamental of the sound that you're trying to side chain or make room for and then make sure that you're compressing that frequency and getting rid of that in the opposing sounds or the sounds that are conflicting with it, right? And that's it. Thanks for watching this video as always. Hope you guys got something out of it. If you did, please subscribe. Please share with your friends, producer friends, artist friends, anybody you think would benefit from this knowledge. Again, this is a game changing trick. It changed everything for me. And it's not just limited to kicks and basses and that stuff. I do this with a lot of different things, snares, vocals, all kinds of stuff. Whatever you want to be prioritized in your mix, this trick works perfectly for that. It's not even really a trick, it's a technique, remember. So thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys again soon. Peace out. Five.